Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between grad school and a postdoc. This is going to be a shorter video as there's not a ton that's different, but I think it's important to point out some of the differences, especially ones that you may not be aware of and some of the common pitfalls that people fall into. So odds are if you're watching this video, you have some grad school experience that you can use on as a reference point. And then we could talk about how things may be similar or different when you go to your postdoc. So let's start from the beginning when you first join the lab. I think one of the most common misconceptions that people have when they start a postdoc is that they think, I've already done my PhD. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to do great. I'm going to kill it from day one. Certainly, that was my expectation when I went, and it is totally wrong. I've seen myself and many other tremendous scientists that have gone from their grad school into a postdoc having nailed grad school, and it's like starting over from ground zero. You're going to learn a lot of new techniques. There's a lot to learn in terms of material. And even if you do something that's similar, there's still going to be new things that you're going to have to do and ways that you're going to grow. Don't get frustrated if the first few months of your postdoc, you feel like you're doing nothing but repeating experiments and nothing's working and you feel like a first year grad student again. That is par for the course. Don't feel bad. I know that some people have told me that they spent the whole first year of their postdoc and none of the data that they generated was useful for their paper down the road. That's going to happen. You know, don't sweat it. So be ready for that. In terms of um, independence, this is another area that I think people are going to falter a little bit. Now, this, of course, depends on the PI that you have. But I think one of the big expectations that they're going to have of you is that you're much more independent. You're much better at finding the literature by yourself and obviously reading it and staying on top of it. You're much better at conducting your experiments and planning your week. And they're going to expect you to be able to take ownership and leadership of your own work. That's something that some postdocs are going to be able to do like right away. Their PIs are very hands-off in grad school to begin with. Certainly that was the case for me. My um, grad school advisor was fantastic in so many ways, um, but he was not a hands-on, he was not a hands-on advisor. He had the attitude of, I already have my PhD. If you want to get your PhD, that's fine, but you need to be able to do your own work and your own project. And that was actually tough at first, but it served me really well because by the time I started my postdoc, I already knew how to find all of the important literature, digest it, and really teach myself something new. Because your postdoc advisor isn't in the business of teaching you all the time necessarily. Um, it's Some of them will have more of a mentor type relationship with you, but a lot of them, what they're really, they're your boss. It's different than an advisor. Um, some people I know when they went to grad school, they're their um, advisors really held their hand a lot. And that's great and can help you to get your degree, but it doesn't serve you well when you go to your postdoc. So be ready to have to have independence in the forefront of your mind. Another big difference is the amount of projects. So when you're in grad school, you typically have one big project that you're working on. Sometimes you may have a, you know one or two other side projects, and that's really good, especially if you're able to publish all of them. But in your postdoc, you need to be ready to be juggling many, many projects. I had five that were ongoing at the same time. Now there was one or two that were like my main projects and the other two to three were more side projects and exploratory, but you're going to have to be able to juggle multiple projects. And that doesn't mean that one hour a day is for this project, the next hour is for this one, the next hour is for this one. What it means is sometimes you may go a week of just working on one specific project or this day is gonna be dedicated to one project and the next day is dedicated to another project, you're gonna to need to find a way to balance all of that out, especially if you're doing work that involves cell culture and molecular work and animal experiments. You need to become very efficient at coming in and you know, starting your gel for the day. And while that's going, you do your cell culture. And then while you start incubating membranes, you're going to the animal facility and taking care of your animals. You know, you need to start really becoming efficient at that, especially because you're going to have to juggle so many projects. And it's actually really, really, really important that you do. And I can't stress that enough. There's two reasons why I think this is so critical. The first reason is that no projects are guaranteed to work. So it's always good to have one really big stretch project that like if that works, like, 
wow, that's gonna be the next nature paper. Like that's great, but that can't be your only project. You also need a smaller, safer project, especially because you're gonna need to publish something within the first few years of your postdoc. So keep that in mind. Don't just have one huge, large stretch project. Those are great and those can get you a nature paper, but that's not gonna be the only thing that you need. The other thing is that as you move forward in your career, whether that's going into industry or going and becoming a PI, you're going to need to be able to demonstrate that you could handle multiple projects. Nobody wants someone that's so narrowly focused that they just have one project that they work on. They want someone that's diversified and can work on multiple projects at the same time. That kind of project management is cr mission critical. The last piece that's gonna be different is the expectations of publishing and securing grants. So maybe you were lucky and you applied for some grants as a grad student. I think if you did that, you're, you're way above what most grad students are doing. Certainly, if you're a grad student, you should have at least published one paper. Hopefully you've published more or some review articles or gotten some co-authorships, co but you should have some level of publication underneath your belt. In a postdoc, it's a different ball game. Most postdoc mentors that I know are going to be requiring you to submit grants. They're going to be wanting you to get grants. And that's because one, they don't want to have to pay the salary. And two, it's good for your own career development. Particularly if you want to stay in academics, you're going to need to secure grants. You need to get training grants, fellowships, early career development awards, like a K award um, from the NIH. Those are super important. And so you need to be able to start preparing yourself mentally to say, I'm going to be working on these grants. And just like you're going to hear from PIs, most of those grants aren't going to get funded. I know that I started off my postdoc with a training grant. And then from there, I quickly generated some data and started submitting applications for fellowships at the NIH, at the ADA, which is the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association. I was applying all over and a lot of them didn't get accepted. Eventually I did get a fellowship that was accepted, but it took tries to do. You know, even if you think you have a good project and you have a solid foundation and you're doing research in a good lab, like sometimes it takes time to get those. The other thing is publications. So I think that when you apply for a grant, they're gonna be looking at what is your productivity level. And from what I understood from my mentor or you know, PhD, P, uh, postdoc PI, was that by year three, you need to have a paper. When you apply for grants, it's the same thing. I had a coworker that was a tremendous, I mean, had unbelievable amounts of data. Like it blew my mind, the amount of data that he had. And when he went to apply for a fellowship and he was in his fourth year, they told him that he was an unproductive scientist because he had gone four years without publishing anything. And that by the third year, he should have published something. The common rule of thumb that I hear, particularly if you want to stay in academics, is that you should have a paper out by year three, and then every year subsequent to that. So year four, there should be another paper, year five should have another, and so on and so on. So the level of publishing that you're going to have to do is a lot more. And again, this goes back to the last point that we talked about in terms of juggling multiple projects, that if you're not juggling multiple projects, you're not going to be able to publish multiple papers and continue that rapid rate of publishing. The last thing that I want to talk about is what it's like leaving. So it is quite a bit different. You know, when I left my lab as a grad student, it was kind of heartbreaking. I mean, that's like your home. You really grew and learned and you form a relationship with your mentor and your other lab mates. I mean, you're, you're real close. While I did have a lot of sad feelings when I left my postdoc, it's a little bit different because there you're, you're conducting business. You're, do, you're going there to work and you're going there to grow and, and have that career development. And don't get me wrong, like the relationships that I made in my postdoc are ones that I'm going to keep forever. And there are people in that lab I know that 30, 40 years from now, I'm still going to talk to and have a relationship with. I mean, I met some of the best people there. It's just not the same and it can't be. They're two different growth trajectories. The other thing is kind of what happens afterwards. So after you leave grad school, you know, you kind of leave 100% behind what you're, what you're doing there. If you leave a postdoc and you're gonna start your own lab, 
you know, one of the things you're going to have to negotiate is what things you could take with you, whether that's reagents, ideas, or projects, you're going to need to take resources with you. Also, if you're leaving your postdoc, it's possible, and this, again, may happen in grad school, it depends, but certainly when you leave your postdoc, odds are you're going to have to keep some level of a working relationship with your PI. There's going to be projects that you started that you didn't get to finish, and now other postdocs are finishing, and you're going to have to provide insight and ideas, help write manuscripts, kind of review some grants. So be ready for them to ask you to do that. And that's good. You know, you should keep those professional relationships going. So I think those are some of the bigger points I wanted to highlight in this. There are, of course, other differences that you could keep in mind, but those are the major ones. So with that, you know, thank you for watching. Subscribe. If you know other people that might be interested in these videos, make sure to share it with them. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this content, and I'll see all of you guys in the next one. Thanks.